As a royal residence and an official state building, Buckingham Palace operates in both the private and public spheres. Its size and grandeur exceeds general knowledge and maybe even expectation, giving individuals living in Buckingham Palace access to much more than meets the eye. So, today we're going to take a look at what it's like to live at Buckingham Palace. But before we get started, be sure to subscribe to the Weird History Channel. After that, we'd be much obliged if you would leave a comment and let us know what other famous historical locations you would like to hear about. Okay, time for a weird history fit for a queen. Buckingham Palace includes 775 rooms, 19 of which are designated as state rooms. Some of the challenges of the aging structure, including a leaking roof and falling detritus, may not seem like the ideal living situation. But as part of the palace's history, these defects could just be considered part of the building's charm. And indeed, while these problems could be easily fixed, the royal family prefers to leave it as is. In fact, according to historian Ellen Leslie, none of the staterooms have been redecorated for more than six decades, which was a very deliberate decision. Most people decorate their houses mainly for fashion reasons every 10 years or so, Leslie said, but, this isn't what the royal family are into when it comes to Buckingham Palace. They want it to keep looking the same. Each of the staterooms is elaborately decorated and requires a fair amount of upkeep. According to Leslie, the reason it's lasted so well is that it was furnished and decorated to a very high standard in the first place. A lot of the interior is based on the inspirations of Edward VII, who loved the place. Buckingham House was acquired by the royal family during the mid-18th century and transitioned to a formal palace under the auspices of King George IV. During the 1820s, George IV and architect John Nash expanded the house into a palace, which entailed rebuilding and adding numerous rooms, as well as a healthy amount of elaborate decor. While some upgrades have taken place throughout Buckingham Palace over the years, they haven't been enough to keep the residential and official areas current. In 2017, the British government allocated 500 million pounds to upgrade water pipes, electrical wiring, light fittings, and radiators, some of which dated back to before World War II. Despite the improvements, defects remain. According to Sir Alan Reed, the keeper of the privy piece, water often leaks from the roof of Buckingham Palace and has to be captured in buckets below. In addition to some practical and aesthetic changes, safety issues need to be addressed as well. On one occasion, a piece of falling masonry almost hit Princess Anne in the head. The repairs are to take place over more than 10 years as a multi-phase operation. Until then, princesses are advised to keep an eye out for falling bits of the ceiling. The British government may have invested 500 million pounds into revamping Buckingham Palace, but it wasn't without controversy. For while the British public is generally fond of the royals, they're not too hot on footing the bill for their home improvements. In fact, when the repairs first became an issue, a petition circulated in the United Kingdom demanding the royal family pay for the work themselves. Several members of Parliament echoed the call for the royals to fund the renovation. But Queen Elizabeth II insists she doesn't own Buckingham Palace, unlike several of her other residences. As a working home, however, Buckingham Palace serves as the base residence for the Queen. God save the Queen, but let the Queen save her own house. Located on the north side of Buckingham Palace are three private apartments occupied by Queen Elizabeth II. While well, who should fit the bill for the palace repairs is a matter of debate, the Queen herself, uncontroversially, pays for the furnishings in her nine-room apartment. Elizabeth and her late husband, Prince Philip, reportedly slept apart in separate rooms because the Queen enjoys having the windows open even in the coldest months. According to Lady Pamela Hicks, Philip's first cousin, it also just generally remains a common practice among the British upper class, sleeping in separate rooms, that is, not leaving the windows open when it's cold. Aptly named the Throne Room, one of the state rooms in Buckingham Palace is home to two thrones called the Chairs of Estate. The chairs were made for the coronation of Queen Elizabeth II and her husband, Prince Philip, in 1953. Chairs used by previous rulers King George VI, crowned in 1937, and Queen Victoria, crowned in 1837, are located in the room as well. Elizabeth II's throne is embroidered with E-I-I-R, her royal cipher for Elizabeth II Regina, and has only been sat upon once. 
After her coronation ceremony, the queen used the throne chair, now located at Windsor Castle. The 40 acres of gardens at Buckingham Palace feature more than 300 types of British wildflowers, 150 trees, 30 species of birds, and numerous types of moths and butterflies. Within the garden, there's a lake that spans three acres and has its own small island. On the island, the palace keeps Italian honeybees, and the queen enjoys organic honey made by the bees. London's oldest helicopter pad also takes up some garden space, as does a tennis court, the herbaceous border, and ornamentation like the Waterloo vase. In many ways, Buckingham Palace is autonomous, offering amenities like a post office, cafeteria, movie theater, and doctor's office for the staff. These features make it easy for employees to take care of personal matters without ever having to leave. Additional facilities include a swimming pool, gym, and chapel. The staff can also join a book club or choir, or benefit from on-site counseling services. Costs for the medical facilities were the subject of public criticism in 2008. The Health Service Journal revealed 300 household staff were receiving medical services at a rate nearly two times the national average. This was especially troubling because the National Health Services in Britain closed down much larger medical practices with lower expenses. At one point, Buckingham Palace had a bar for the staff. But according to Dickie Arbiter, former press officer for Queen Elizabeth II, the bar was closed due to worse-for-wear staff, which is generally code for people were getting too drunk too often. Based on reports, the Queen shut down the on-site watering hole. On at least one occasion, however, the Queen served drinks in the palace, handing the Queen Mother's upholsterer, Kevin Andrews, a builder's tea, a mug of tea with two sugars. In the basement of Buckingham Palace, a Coots Bank ATM gives members of the royal family access to cash at any time. Queen Elizabeth II is said to never carry cash. But because the palace serves as both a royal residence and the site of matters of state, the royals are regularly present. Coots, one of the oldest banks in the world, serves the highest echelons of society, including the Queen Mother, who passed in 2002. The Queen Mother once overdrew four million pounds from the bank, although not from the ATM, which was installed in 2001. Buckingham Palace has 188 staff bedrooms. These facilities are relatively small quarters where workers can sleep while on duty. When Buckingham Palace advertised for a housekeeping assistant in 2016, the position included staying at the palace full time, sleeping and eating while working an unspecified number of hours. While housekeeping at the palace is a pretty demanding gig, it's not without its perks, which include exclusive phone packages and car leasing discounts. Positions at Buckingham Palace also come with extensive training, with everyone from telephone operators to butlers learning how to deliver extraordinary service in incredible surroundings. So imagine you're just doing your job, minding your own business when, without any warning, the Queen of England just walks into the room and starts hanging out. It's hard to picture, but it happens. At least if you work at Buckingham Palace, it happens. Former palace butler Richard Kerrigan, for one, recalled an unexpected encounter with the queen. He was standing and walking on a 180-person table to fix a flower arrangement when the queen walked in. Unable to speak to the monarch unless approached by her, he continued his task. According to Kerrigan, he was thinking that it was a quite abnormal thing, but she's checking to make sure everything suits her. He added that with the events, we see her all the time. As you can probably guess, interacting with the Queen is subject to all sorts of rules, even if you're the palace butler, like Kerrigan. And not being able to talk to her before she spoke to you was just one. According to the man himself, he once got caught trying to take a picture inside the palace, which is strictly forbidden. And during dinner service, he and the other servers had to watch a green and red traffic light system to see when they were allowed to leave and enter the room. Discretion and protocol are maintained at all times. Simon Morgan, Royal Protection Officer from 2006 to 2013, echoed this sentiment when he recalled his time at the palace. He was both in awe of and deferential about being allowed into places you wouldn't normally have access to. According to Morgan, you are very fortunate to be in these positions, to travel by private charter, or travel first class, or be on super yachts, or to eat in some of the nicest restaurants the world can offer, but it's just a job. And after Morgan's job was done, he went back to being just like anyone else. As he says, 
You go back to your two up, two down home and life carries on. Your environment might change, but you remember you are still a police officer employed by the Met Police. Queen Elizabeth II keeps a regular meal routine, enjoying tea, fruit, and eggs in the morning. She even has a favorite cereal. We'd like to say it's something like Fruit Loops or Lucky Charms, but it's just plain old Special K. She also generally stays away from starches, but doesn't avoid alcohol. Elizabeth drinks in moderation, enjoying gin and wine throughout the day. Hey, <laughs> it's good to be the queen. Elizabeth also has bowls of nuts around the palace to snack on and is adamant about protecting them for herself. As a result of unapproved snacking, palace police officers were warned to keep their sticky fingers out of her nuts. Elizabeth also enjoys Tabasco sauce, Walker shortbread, and chocolate, although presumably not all at once. So what do you think? How would you like living at Buckingham Palace? Let us know in the comments below, and while you're at it, check out some of these other videos from Our Weird History.